Well, look, that was the legal side of things. This is the illegal side of things. And this was some good news for Rishi Sunak because the illegal migration bill was finally approved by the House of Lords. It's the centrepiece of the government's plans to solve the small boats crisis. Peers had dealt a succession of blows to the bill, but the Tory front bench saw off five further changes from the Lords last night. And it is now set to become law. But, but, but... What does all of this really mean? Because kind of a key cornerstone of it is the Rwanda plan. Well, that's in court, isn't it? It's been caught every two minutes. I'm joined by Jeremy Hutton from Migration Watch UK. Jeremy, thank you very, very much. What now? Hi, Patrick. Well, the next step, of course, I think will be royal assent. But ultimately, once it actually gets on statute books, that doesn't mean we're going to be suddenly sending people off to Rwanda because, of course, the government was uh, defeated in the course of appeal quite recently. So it's going to go to the Supreme Court. We don't know exactly when. It could be September, October, possibly sooner, but it's probably going to be around then. And after then, of course, assuming the government win, which is, you know, not an assumption we should put too much money on, it mm. could then go to the European Court of Human Rights, at which point the government will have to decide, do we want to go forward with the bill or do we want to ignore the, uh, the European Court and just, just get people to Rwanda and start creating this deterrent effect so people stop making these dangerous crossings across the Channel? But it does, however, appear that, at least in the short term, that sense has been seen, doesn't it? Which is that it's all very well and good trying to find legal problems or practical issues with a government policy that has received big public backing, that has received backing in the House of Commons from a majority government. It's a completely different kettle of fish, trying to hit back with totally new policies, which is essentially what the House of Lords was trying to do. And people, wreckers in chief, like Archbishop Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury. It appears now that at least sense has been seen in that regard, because otherwise, frankly, we were going to have to abolish the House of Lords. Well, it did seem like the House of Lords has uh, come to accept the fact that if they had kept pushing back on the government against this bill, they would have been putting themselves in an impossible uh, position, which happens now and then. But usually, mm -hmm. when it comes down to the House of Commons versus House of Lords, it's the House of Lords that blinks first, because they know that if, if they if they stick to their guns, well, yeah. they might lose their seats entirely. Which, which actually makes it all the more pathetic, because all that has happened is that we end up with dither and delay, and more people arrive, and the problem gets worse. And while some people can stand up in the House of Lords, they tap in for however much money it is every day, they get the subsidised transport there, they get the subsidised meals. Oh, it's a lovely life, isn't it? It's a great, lovely, cushy deal if you can get it. I'm pretty sure at least two or three of those people that our TV viewers will be able to see on those benches now are fast asleep, dozing away, dribbling all over themselves because they've had a couple of glasses of Chateauneuf de Pape at lunch. Isn't it all fantastic? Meanwhile, the country suffers. And you know what? If they were just going to back out of it anyway, then what was the point? We've wasted a load of time. But Jeremy, thank you very much. Jeremy Hudson from Migration Watch UK. Always an honour and a privilege.